Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan and we have plenty of videos here on our channel talking about how you can take your 4K Blu-ray collection and convert those movies into files which you can then stream over your network using a computer or a NAS. In fact, at this point, I've said it so many times, I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record. But this video is going to be just a little different, because today I'm going to show you how you can take pretty much any NAS, like any of the ones we have here, along with a Blu-ray drive and a little bit of free software, and build what I think is the ultimate solution to 4K Blu-ray ripping. Just pop in a Blu-ray, wait about an hour, and your disc will automatically rip and eject, so you can start another one, all without ever having to select tracks or mess with Make MKV for each movie you rip. You could sort of consider this a follow-up to the previous videos that we've done on the subject, since the parts that you're going to need are very similar. For this guide, I'm going to expect that you have some kind of a NAS with hard drives in it, and you're probably going to want at least 8GB of RAM for the most optimal experience. We really feel like Synology NASs are the way to go here since DSM makes this process trivial, but the guide should apply to the vast majority of NASs on the market, like this TerraMaster unit, or even this random NAS I got off eBay. Of course, you're also going to need some kind of a Blu-ray drive that connects over USB to rip the movies. In our most recent guide, we used this LG drive here, which you can get on Amazon, and just flash the firmware to enable support for MakeMKV's Libre Drive mode, which is actually the software that allows the drive to rip 4K discs at full speed. If you don't have a drive yet, I would recommend watching that video to get yourself familiar with the process first. We also have this slimline Pioneer drive that we use to rip 4K movies, but newer versions of this drive have an updated firmware which seems to have broken its disc ripping capabilities, so you'll probably want to steer clear of these drives for now. Ours has an older firmware though, so it would also be totally appropriate for this guide. So if you want to follow along, get your optical drive, flash its firmware if necessary using an up-to-date guide, and plug it into a USB 3 port on your NAS. I'll be using our Synology DS1621 Plus and the Slimline Pioneer drive, but again the steps are going to be the same for whatever Blu-ray drive, and very similar across different NASs. So with that said, I'm going to head on over to my computer and show you how to get this all put together. Okay, so at this point we have our drive hooked up to our Synology NAS, and I'm going to be setting up a virtual machine here in DSM to host all the software that we're going to need to get this project going. So if you don't have it already, I would recommend installing the Virtual Machine Manager, which is available from the Synology Package Center. You can just search Virtual Machine, and you'll be able to install it right here if it's not already installed. Uh, as you can see here, I have one Virtual Machine for Home Assistant on the NAS, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So before we do that, we're going to get an image for our virtual machine to boot from. I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server Linux. So if you go to ubuntu.com and go to the download thing here, get Ubuntu Server. And we're just going to get the regular long-term service release, Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS. Go ahead and wait for that to start. And once you have that file downloaded on your computer, all you have to do is take the ISO file and move it to a share that's already hosted on your Synology NAS. For example, I have a file share right here, and I can just drag and drop it into my Synology NAS. And you can see right here, we now have our copy of Ubuntu. Head on back over to DSM, and we can actually start creating the virtual machine that we'll be using. In the Virtual Machines tab, click the Create button, It'll ask you what operating system you want to run. I'm going to be using Linux, so right there. Hit next. Uh, just leave it on whatever storage. I'm just putting it on the main RAID of our NAS here. For a name, I'm just going to call it Automatic Ripping. We'll give it one CPU, uh, two CPUs, two CPU cores. Uh, one gigabyte of memory should be perfectly fine. Um, for video card, use the regular VGA option right here and leave everything else default. In the storage tab, you're going to want to type in not a crazy number. I'll use 40 gigabytes. The movies aren't going to be saved on the virtual machine's hard disk, so 40 gigabytes should be plenty. For the network, I'm going to leave it not connected for now. We'll connect it after we have the operating system installed so we can get updates. For the ISO file for boot up, I'm going to browse and go to our file share where we copied the Ubuntu ISO file and select it right there. For auto start, I'm going to hit yes because I want it to start whenever I turn on the Synology NAS. For firmware, go ahead and use UEFI. 
And for the virtual USB controller, go ahead and set that to USB 3.0. And now the USB device option is gonna become available and we can select our Blu-ray drive. In this case, I'm using the Pioneer drive, as I mentioned. Hit next, hit next. And with that all done, you can see the options that we've set here. I'm gonna power on the virtual machine after creation and hit done. And once it's up here, you can hit the connect button and that will let us actually get a view of what the virtual machine is doing. At this point, we're gonna be installing Ubuntu server so you can use your keyboard and press enter to go into that menu. Wait a little while and this will load all of the stuff that Ubuntu needs to prepare the installer and continue. And once that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and select our language. I'm just doing this in English, hit done. And at this point, it's going to ask you if you want to install third-party drivers or anything. I would just leave this screen default since we don't have an internet connection yet. Go ahead and continue without network. Done. Done. Continue without updating. And at this point, it's going to ask you to format the hard drive. And this is all just the virtual disk. So just hit the down arrow key until done is highlighted and press enter. Hit done. When you get this confirmation dialog, go down to continue and press enter. Nothing is gonna be lost on your NAS because this is all within the virtual machine. Now you can set up a quick profile. I'm just gonna do a really basic setup. My name is user, my server's name, Ripper. The username is user and do a secure little pin or password if you so desire. Once that's done, go down and press enter on the done button. You can skip this as well, just press enter. You can also skip this as well. Just go down and press enter. At this point, you're gonna be able to see a log of the whole installation process. So wait here for a little while and hopefully the installation will complete successfully and you'll get the option to reboot. And with that, everything is installed. So hit the down arrow key a couple times until you get the prompt to reboot now and press enter. And what we're actually gonna do when we see this error is go back to the Synology DSM home screen and we're gonna go ahead and shut down the virtual machine from here using the drop down, hit for shutdown. And that's because we're gonna change a couple more options in the virtual machine just to get it connected to our network. So go ahead and click on the virtual machine, go to action here and edit. And we have a couple things. Go to the network tab and change network now from not connected to default VM network. You can also go to others and click on ISO file for boot up right here where we installed our Ubuntu ISO and just click on that and set it to unmounted. With that, hit okay and power on the machine. Okay, and we have a login screen. So go ahead and sign in with the username and password that you set in the installation. And if all goes well, we should be left with a regular prompt. And if you see a bunch of random stuff like this come on the screen, don't worry about it. This is normal. It's just because this is the first time we've booted the VM. Now, the first thing that we need to do from here is update our machine since we didn't have internet while we were installing and we didn't install any updates. To do that, type in the command sudo space apt space update space hyphen y and press enter. It's going to ask you for your password, so type that in here. And now it's going to go ahead and grab all of the updates that it needs to get our system secure. Next thing that we're going to do is install a couple of packages that we need to get started. To do that, type in sudo space apt space install space cifs hyphen utils space lsscsi space hyphen y and press enter. And once you have a prompt again, those two packages have been installed. And what we did was install a piece of software that's gonna tell us where exactly our Blu-ray drive is mapped within the virtual machine. So to check that, type in lsscsi space hyphen g and press enter. You can see here, I have four different options show up and the last one is our Pioneer Blu-ray drive. You can see the model number BDRXS07U and you can see that's mounted at both dev SR2 and dev SG3. Go ahead and write those two values down. That's gonna be what we need to actually get the MakeMKV to detect our drive. The next thing we're gonna do is make a folder so that we can actually mount our NAS and its storage into the virtual machine so we can save movies to it when we're trying to rip them. 
to do that, go ahead and type in sudo space mkdir space forward slash mnt forward slash nas for nas. And now we're going to save a credentials file so we can actually connect to our shared folder that's on the NAS. You should have a login that you use to access DSM and you can just use that here or make a specific account for this virtual machine that can access the share that you want if you want to be really secure. For all we're doing here, we can just type in the command nano space dot smb underscore c-r-e-d-s and press enter. That's gonna give you a text editor and you just need to type in username and whatever the username for your account is in the Synology and the password for that account as well. Once that's done, press Control and O to save the file, press enter, then press Control X to exit. And now we're actually gonna do the magic command that makes it so that the NAS will find our share. To do that, type in sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash fstab and press enter this is going to give you a text file and you can use the down arrow key to scroll all the way down and start typing in this line the ip address that i'm using here is the ip address of the nas in our network but yours is probably going to be different if you need to find that head on over to dsm and you should be able to see your ip address right here The word files here should be whatever the name of your shared folder is that you're going to be saving your movies to. Once that's done, press Ctrl O and press enter to save the file and then press Ctrl X to exit. You can now test this by typing the command sudo space mount space hyphen A and see if you get any feedback. If you don't, then it should be good. And to make sure that you actually have the shared folder, you can type ls space slash mnt forward slash nas. And you should hopefully be able to see your files that are in that shared folder. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and go through the process of installing Docker. And to do that, just type in this command, followed by sh space get hyphen docker dot sh. And once that's done, you should be left with another prompt, which means we're good to go. The next thing we'll do is make sure that Docker loads whenever we start the virtual machine, and that's also really easy. It's just one command, sudo space system ctl space enable space docker. Press enter, and it'll run that. And just to be safe, we'll also go ahead and start it really quick, sudo systemctl start docker. Now we're actually gonna make the script that will execute make MKV. To do that, type in nano space make MKV dot sh. I'm gonna leave all of the text that you need to put into this file in the description, but I'm also gonna type it here line by line. Okay, so as you can see here, this is all the contents of the script that's actually gonna bring up the make MKV container. A couple things to note here are the devices. These are going to be the things that you wrote down earlier from the lsscsi-g command earlier. And also make sure that you get this mount NAS part because this is actually the share that is going to be going to your NAS. If you've been following the guide and using all the same inputs, like the same username and everything, all of this should be identical. Just make sure that the device entries also match. Once that's done, press Ctrl and O and press enter to save the file, and then control X. To make this file executable, we need to run the command sudo space chmod space plus x space dot forward slash make mkv dot sh. And to run it, just type in sudo space dot forward slash make mkv dot sh. It's gonna say that it can't find make mkv and it'll start pulling all the resources that it needs and then run the container. And once that's done, the container should be running. So to access it over the network, we need to find the IP address of our virtual machine. That's pretty easy. Type in the command IP space ADDR and press enter. 
There's a lot of stuff here, but the only one that we're interested in is the one that actually has an IP address which matches the other IP addresses on our network. So for example, the entry for ENS3 in this list here starts with 192.168, which is the same as the other addresses in my network, so I can read it 192.168.0.205. Once we have that, we can open a new tab in our browser and go to 192.168.0.205 colon 5800 and press enter. If all goes well, you should see make MKV and you can even see here that it's picked up our Pioneer Blu-ray drive, so we're good to go. The last thing that we want to do is quickly create a service so that make MKV will always start whenever the virtual machine starts. And that'll mean that even if your NAS restarts, it'll just start the virtual machine and start make MKV without any user intervention. To do that, go back to our virtual machine Type in the command sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash system d forward slash system forward slash docker hyphen make mkv dot service. It's a pretty basic little information file. Once you have all the information, press control and O and enter to save the file and control X to close it. The very last thing we need to do is type in the command sudo space systemctl space enable space docker hyphen make mkv dot service. With that, all of the services and software that we need for the setup are now deployed on the NAS. So you could safely restart this virtual machine and it should come back and reconnect to your NAS and start up make mkv as usual. I'm going to go back to make MKV here, and I'm going to walk over to the NAS and insert a Blu-ray, so we'll see if it automatically starts ripping our disk. And you can see that make MKV has picked up the disk, and you can see a little window here that we're actually ripping our 47 Ronin UHD Blu-ray completely automatically. I did not have to do anything to get it to start this process, it just detected that there was a disk. It's going to start scanning and ripping the contents to our NAS. And that's pretty much it. At this point, you should be able to rip any kind of disk and it'll automatically drop itself onto your NAS. And once that rip is done, the drive is going to eject the disk for you so you can just run another one. At this point, you can also run a Jellyfin server off the folder you're saving to, and now you can back up and stream all of your movies without ever having to touch a piece of software. Just put a disk in. So, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video helpful, and let us know if you're considering tackling a project like this. If so, keep us posted on your experience. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.